pay suction tape? Uh, pull, please, if we use anything. Hi guys, this is Charles. I'm one of the surgeons at Melbourne Vet Specialist Center. We have a 1.2 kilogram puppy with a peritoneal pericardial duct hematocarnia. Can I get cautery plugged in, please? Yep. Uh, incidentally, it also has an umbilical horn hernia, which I can use to cut into the abdomen. Um, so this dog presented just with loose stools. Uh, anorexia and lethargy and the radiographs confirm the presence of a peritoneal pericardial diaphragmatic hernia. So we are doing a little repair. We're very lucky to have our specialist anesthesiologist Georgie here to help us out. Hello. Um, she says hello. And it is just such a tiny little dog. I'm actually a bit worried about how I'm going to get my fingers in here to repair it. So we can already see liver here and we can see all the guts heading into the thorax. And so we might have a problem with um, what's called loss of domain, which means that we may not have enough room for all of the guts inside the abdomen once we reduce everything, particularly if this has been present since birth. So I'm reducing this hernia slowly. As you can see, and the hope is that it's just peritoneal pericardial and that it does not actually communicate with the chest cavity at all. Um, and that would be fantastic because that means that uh, the risk of respiratory complications are much lower. It's like re-expansion pulmonary edema and that kind of thing. So we're down to cecum here. Colon was definitely in there. And my hope is that I can reduce it without having to enlarge the hernia, because if I have to enlarge the hernia, then you run the risk of getting into the chest cavity. All right, so everything's reduced now. Um, got a little bit of uh, pericardial effusion. Can I get suction turned on for a minute? So you can see the hernia. down there and I can see the heart beating. Alright. So stick your little pinky in there. Can I get some 30 PDS please? Or 30 proline please. Can you feel that? And I'm trying to be quick here with this surgery because in a pediatric patient we're worried about it getting cold. So I'm just, I don't have to freshen up these edges. I'm just suturing. The edges of the diaphragm there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to close it and then I'll quickly do an X lap to make sure that nothing looks strangulated or congested. So this puppy is four weeks old. Four weeks old. Sorry? Four weeks, eight weeks old. Eight weeks old, sorry. Uh, we did not. I'm just being really careful not to lacerate the liver as well. Now if we do have loss of abdominal domain and cannot close the abdomen, we could potentially, I think I'm going to close it this way, we could potentially do a splenectomy to reduce the volume of abdominal contents.
what you wouldn't want to do is create a compartment syndrome in the abdomen. It can reduce blood return to the heart and that kind of thing. Um, if you do expose the chest cavity, then you do have to put in a, a chest tube. All right, so we've got this colon here. Just need to make sure we don't have another hernia. It is just so tiny in here. I'm just trying to get a little bit of a look at the diaphragm. Get a little adhesion. Hold on to that, please. A little adhesion to the. So the rest of the diaphragm looks good. Stomach up there. Duodenum. Then into jejunum. Running the bowel. Good peristalsis. Normal mesenteric lymph nodes. down to the ileum, our anti-mesenteric vessel there, the colon, just pull stomach out of the way here, and look at the, because we did not do a um, CT scan on this dog, so, all right, so everything looks pretty good, and so the big question is going to be, can we close this abdomen, and the colon is being full of gas is not helping either. Right, let's just lift that up like that. Right, so we're just tucking all of that in. I'll use the same proline. Uh, and we are not putting in a chest drain because we did not go into the diaphragm. I mean, we did not go into the chest cavity. So it was a peritoneal pericardial diaphragmatic hernia. Go ahead and take that one gelpie out. Make sure that I'm happy with my repair. Yeah, that looks great. Go ahead and take that one out as well. Got a little umbilical hernia. Thank you.
Can I get some four hours PDS, please? Thank you. And I'm just going straight to skins here. All right, so we'll go ahead and wrap up the live stream. Um, Okay, so I do not normally freshen up the edges of the diaphragm. That is not necessary. Um, and what were the other questions? Uh, a ventilator is a must. Is it? Uh, a ventilator is not a must. Yeah, well, a, a ventilator, uh, as in somebody or something that is ventilating the patient, is a must, but it doesn't have to be a mechanical ventilator. So you can manually ventilate. And I did surgery in general in a private practice as a surgeon for about a year without a ventilator, without a mechanical ventilator. And I just had my nurses bagging six to ten times a minute and watching the capnograph. And when I finally got a ventilator, they all complained that they thought they didn't have as much control over the anesthetic till they used it for about a month and then they realized how much more hot time they had to do everything else. So and, much so, and then they realized that they were actually much happier. But you can certainly do it. It's not it's not ideal, but it certainly is possible. Um, so uh, age of the puppy is eight weeks. Um, I do repair with non-absorbable suture. Um, I use proline in this dog. I don't know that it's absolutely necessary, um, but I mean proline, it's not gonna do any harm to have a very inert suture in there for an extended period of time. Methadone, midazolam, and propofol for induction. All right. And on that note, um, so yeah, we do mean bagging. Um, so bagging the patient, you, you can definitely get away with that. We, I did it for a long time, but uh, it's certainly, you know, in this day and age, much better to have a ventilator. Um, that being said, if you have a very complicated ventilator that you can't work, um, you're better off just bagging the patient and doing something that you know that's reliable. And that would involve, you know, just watching the pressure, making sure that you're staying below probably 10 to 12 uh, centimeters of water, millimeters of mercury, um, centimeters of water. So this dog presented um, lethargic, anorexic, green, watery stools. Um, but no respiratory difficulty at all. So, all right, so we'll go ahead and finish that up. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already done, done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream.